with all the challenges we have with time and pressures, I, I, I find it fulfilling in my heart as a human being to spend time with some of these families, even families of my colleagues in Ngao, we have lost chiefs and assistant chiefs and deputy county commissioners, even to COVID. Because as our president has reminded us all the time, we are a family as a people of Kenya, and more so we in the security sector. We are family. We stand together. And you know how our president has cultivated that multi-agency framework of working. Now we have a very strong bond, not just in the internal security sector, but we work very closely with our colleagues in the defense forces. We are all the time consulting with our colleagues in Kenya, and we have become a family. The security sector is now family. We work together. We compare notes together. We plan together. We approach the challenges of our country together. This is the only way we can succeed. And I dare say that let us stand together both when we are not working and when unfortunately some of our brothers and sisters did not come back home at the end of the shift. Let's stand together. After all, what more can we do as human beings serving in this world than to stand for each other, than to look out for each other? Those brothers and sisters from those families are not here because they were looking out for us. They had our backs. And unfortunately, some of them did not come home at the end of the shift. They paid the ultimate price. For those of us who are still alive and walking this earth, we can say thank you by looking out to their families, looking after their children, looking after these widows. I want to promise the families of our departed officers that we remain steadfast. Our president is very committed to you. And our president is pushing us to institutionalize all these things we are doing. We are blessed, and for that we thank the Lord that our commander is somebody who pays attention to the lives we lead, even when we are working. That's why our welfare has improved tremendously with the house allowance scheme for the police officers and so on. And today I want to announce to you that for the police officers who are here, who are listening to me, we are now stepping to a new and advanced level of addressing the welfare of police officers through several PPP frameworks, working with private sector. We are now beginning a new ultra-modern wave of building a high-cost, affordable, good accommodation for our police officers. Uh, one PPP has been signed already and we are working on one or two others. And soon enough, all this public land that we have as police officers, we want to work with private sector to build under long-term frameworks good accommodation for our police officers. We want our police officers now to live in two, three very well-built apartments within police facilities where we get into long-term arrangements with the private sector to develop this, the build, the operate and transfer after 15, 20 years. And while we do that, our police officers will be living in ultra-modern facilities and good facilities to render the service commensurate with the thank you that we need to say to them every time. We need to say thank you. I want to ask my fellow Kenyans, citizens of this country, please let us learn to say thank you. I said this several times before. In some environments, when you go, in societies probably more advanced than ours, even when you are queuing to get into the plane, we give first priority to security officers, retired army officers who have served in the security services before the rest of us board the planes. You go to the USNC, sometimes retired senior police officers, retired uh, you know, soldiers, servicemen, people who have served their country in the security sector are given the first priority to go in and the rest of us go. That is a very simple way of saying thank you. We also need to learn this culture of saying thank you to our security sector people. Thank you for the sacrifices and the services that they make. I often ask people, we raise money to build houses for the local priest or the parish priest. 
Why can't we raise money and build a decent accommodation for the local OCPT? Why can't we go to our various jurisdictions and say, tomorrow we want to build an ultra-modern facility for our OCS, so that whoever comes here as our OCS, as a water tank, as a three-bedroomed house, lives in comfort, and works with us as we move forward. It's a culture. We need to start working on this attitude towards the security sector so that we build this family that our president keeps uh, reminding us. Build a family called Kenya. We are one people. God has blessed us and placed us here so that we build a family, a nation that is essentially a family we look out for, for, for each other as it were. So we wish you well. We will do our best to continue improving uh, the welfare of our security officers and support you. And while we do that, I promise two things. One, we'll continue to work strictly according to the law. We will follow the law. We will respect the rights of our people. Slowly but surely, and for this, I want to thank you very sincerely, IG, we are moving in the right direction. Uh, the discussions we're having within, the engagements we're having among us ourselves, on the discipline of our officers and how we continue to support our officers. We will soon be training cadet police officers who are going to be managers who train and mentor young police officers. We are slowly but surely getting into that tradition of a highly disciplined force. We serve people. We should be respectful of them. And my dream and the dream of all well-meaning leaders in the security sector is that we remain the go-to people at all times. That if there is a problem anywhere, people must always run towards the police officer because the police officer is the present fiscal refuge uh, that you can trust, that is credible, that is trustworthy at all times. I would like to see police officers, as you drive around your vehicles in the rural areas of the country, everywhere you go, if there is an old woman who is late to get home, we need to live in a country where police officers stop and tell her mama, umejeleva tutu tukupeleke nyumbani. And then we take that old mama home. That's what we are supposed to do. Service to our people. And uh, we need now to redefine and take service to an even higher level. A higher level of integrity, a higher level of compassion and care for our people. Because then, and only then, will we build a relationship where the public trusts us. They look at the work we do and they give us the information we need to be able to succeed as we go forward. Secondly, we will be true to our country and be very honest. I have received so many queries uh, in the last weeks or so about gambling and betting and so on. And I actually ensured that the CEO of the Betting Control and Licensing Board came with me this year today. And I want to tell him publicly and I want to assure the people of Kenya. Look, we, Boogie and all of you, my brothers, we have been given this responsibility to serve our people and to look out for the interests of our people. We will not go back on decisions that we have made as a government. And Kenyans can rest assured absolutely on this matter. We are not going to allow criminals, money launderers, and all manner of shadowy characters to come around our country to be doing all these funny things around gambling and so on, the tax evaders and so on, to rain havoc in our society as it were. We have agreed with the Inspector General because under the law, I cannot direct him. I respect the law. Fortunately, him and the DCI assist of this matter. I have only asked the betting control and licensing board to file with the Inspector General and the DCI the strict records of the people they have licenses to operate around. I asked the Director of Immigration this morning, and the law is very clear. The directors of any of those companies must be known. If they are foreigners, solid due diligence must be done on them. And I want to assure Kenyans, and then you can take me uh, uh, serious on this particular matter. We are not going to rescind the decisions we have taken to deport some of these people out of our country. God has given us our country so that we take care of it. 
not so that we auction it around for personal gain and we auction opportunities for personal gain you know move around uh, being persuaded by people uh, who are telling us about the connections and who they know and who they don't know it's up to you whether you know that is your problem and it's you to care about who you know as for me i know the law and i know my boss it's as simple as that and that is how we work and my boss has not told me to do any of those things so you you can know whomever you wanted to know that is your problem and boogie we agreed must file the records with the inspector general and the dci and they must have every record that you have on who is operating in that sector those who have been deported including people some of them actually uh, who are on the watch list of international criminal organizations uh, come to our country and they want to do things in our country that they cannot do in their countries you know loan the money around and pretend that you are doing some sort of gambling and so on and so forth it will not happen under our watch we have a responsibility to serve this country truthfully, very sincerely, and openly. So, as for us, is the decision we have taken. We have been given a responsibility. My colleague here, the Inspector General, and I sit at the National Security Council. These things have been discussed before. We know where we have had challenges before, and we will not go back. So, those many Kenyans, the leaders of faith based organizations, the bishops who have been calling me, the imams saying, Oh, what are we doing with this sector? I assure you. It will not happen under our watch, I, I, I assure you. I have made assurances before on certain things that I have been given a responsibility to do. And by the grace of God, I have kept the promise. And the Inspector General, the DCI, and myself can promise again, we will keep that promise. The era where people run around, you know, whom we don't know, and they keep talking to people, at night, shadowy characters telling people about connections and so on. That is gone. We are not driven that way ourselves. What you need to know as a public servant is the law. You need to know your God, whom you worship, and you need to know your boss, from whom you take directions. And the directions I've taken from my boss, His Excellency the President, are crystal clear to me. This madness must come to an end, and it will not happen again. And, and our president has made this promise publicly to religious leaders when they have asked him, to everybody, and we are the implementers of that promise. It is not going to happen. So, this year, we have your back, do your work, and make sure that all those characters who run around here, you know, people arrive here in the country, befriend our girls within a day or two, then they come and claim, oh, you know, by the way, I'm married to a Kenyan. So, I am a Kenyan citizen, and therefore, I am entitled. You can tell that to the we, we will not allow that to happen. We will not accept and it's not going to happen. And those that have been deported will not come back. So those keep writing petitions saying, oh, you know, yeah, they have done this and so on. Every country, you know, has a right to manage itself properly. After all, by the way, we are all in trustees. We are holding these jobs temporarily for now. Uh, our turn to play this role will come to an end and uh, others will be given an opportunity to play this role. Let us just do what is right in the eyes of God, what is right in the eyes of the law, and what is acceptable and good for our country. That is what we are expected to do. So finally, my brothers and sisters, I wish you all the best. Uh, if we do not meet for those that we will not see before Christmas, despite the challenges we face, we wish you a Merry Christmas. And uh, let's keep the faith. We worship a living God. He has brought us this far. I have no doubt in my mind that the Lord will see us through some of these challenges. That we will cross the difficulties and the bridge that we have is ahead of us. Whether it is about COVID-19. Let's keep the faith. Pray for our president to continue maintaining a steady hand and for us in the security sector remain steadfast in defense of our country true to our nation true to our creator committed and focused on inflexible commitment to serve during this season when we have been given an opportunity to serve may the lord bless you indeed merry christmas and a happy new year thank you